Uh, I'm going to sing this morning, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Christmas Carol is one of the most loved and enduring Christmas movies or plays and you know the storyline well. You have the old, tight-fisted, hard-hearted, wretched, miserable man Ebenezer Scrooge who has no appreciation at all for the spirit of Christmas. But then his world and his perspective change dramatically when he receives a visit and has a chance to do some traveling. And he has the opportunity when he works with the ghosts of Christmas past, the ghosts of Christmas present, and the ghosts of Christmas future to see things as others perhaps see them. By viewing the future and seeing how the townspeople do not at all mourn his death, he realizes that he has never brought any joy into the world that he has occupied. And he has suddenly a new appreciation for joy. He feels a joy within him, and he so much wants to share that joy with the world. As Christians, we certainly should have joy in our lives. We should be more like Bob Cratchit, the, one of the characters there, and his family who appreciate what's going on despite tough times. We should be more like Bob Cratchit instead of crotchety like Ebenezer Scrooge. We should be jubilant instead of just getting by. We should be shouting and singing instead of slumping and sulking. We should have great joy in our lives. If there's a single word that describes what Christmas is all about, it's the word joy. Several of our favorite Christmas carols mention it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. O come all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. The carols proclaim the joy that we hold in our heart because we know the Christmas story. 
and we know what it means to our lives. Luke tells the Christmas story so beautifully. This morning we're going to be reading from the King James Version. Many of the more modern versions, perhaps they're more accurate in their translation, somehow just don't have quite the same resonance with us as the King James Version does of the Christmas story. We'll be reading this morning from Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee unto the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Let's pray. Father, as we come to you this morning and we say good morning, we thank you for the peace that's in our life, the joy that we know because we have claimed you, claimed you as our Lord, claimed you as our Savior, the most important because you have claimed us as your children. As we again visit the, the Christmas story, help us look in our lives for sources of joy. We know the trials and tribulations never totally leave us. There's always something going on. So help us always rediscover the joy that you mean for us to have in our lives. Bless us now, Father, as we continue worshiping you. In the name of Jesus, amen. These verses illustrate a great truth for us. There are actually three sources of joy in our lives. Much like Ebenezer Scrooge discovered, we have joy in our life. He, he found that there was joy, but he had to find it in the right places. Well, for us, there's joy from the past, joy from the present, and joy from the future. In 1867, a Boston pastor named Philip Brooks visited the Holy Land at Christmas time. And upon returning, he wrote a Christmas carol. And the next year, his music director set that to music, and they performed it as part of their Christmas concert. We still sing this particular Christmas carol today. The lyrics go, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Pastor Philip Brooks wrote that in that way 146 years ago, because at that time, Bethlehem was still very much like it was at the time Mary gave birth to Jesus. It's a very quiet, sleepy village. It wasn't one of the top ten tourist destinations in Israel as it is today. It's a bustling city filled with, with a lot of businesses, a lot of street vendors, uh, a lot of crime that goes with that, that number of people that are there. In this time, it was very quiet, much like when Mary gave birth. But Pastor Philip Brooks, during his time there, felt a connection he felt a sense of joy with the past. Now we can also look to our past and find joy. We, we can look and we can find difficulties, or we can look and we can see that there's great experiences. Because each of us has a past. It's sort of like an elaborate mural. Your, your life can be painted on this wall. And as we look along the mural, we would see various scenes, great scenes that inspire us, that, that motivate us, things that brought us great joy, times of laughter, times of delight. Places where we can look and see the joy that traces the path throughout our lives. The book, Out of the Silence, relates an incredible story from the past. There's an audio tape of Dwayne Miller teaching his Sunday school class from Psalm 103 at the First Baptist Church in Brenham, Texas, January 17, 1993. 
Dwayne had prematurely retired from pastoring three years earlier because of a virus that penetrated the myelin sheath around his vocal cords and had reduced his speech to a, a real raspy, rough whisper. Teaching this class that particular day, he's got a special microphone that's actually touching his lips. He reaffirmed his belief in divine healing and that miracles had not ended with the book of Acts. Now, listening at the tape, at times you can barely understand his weak speech spoken wheezy words of faith but the miracle happened at verse 4 when he said I have had and you have had in times past pit experiences on the word pit his life changed the word was as clear as a bell in, in very stark contrast to the preceding word past the word pit came out perfectly well, he, he stopped started again Stopped and started once more. He said a few more words. All in a great, clear tone. Perfect enunciation on those. The class erupted in cheers and worship. Because the healing had taken place right in front of them. You see, we can look to the past and we can find great joy from our past. We just have to simply be willing to do that. God healed him. God has healed us. We can all share great stories of healing that has gone on. But also we find that there's great joy from the past when we look at the prophecy of the birth of Christ. Scripture as early as Genesis 12, 3 foretold the gift and the joy that God had planned for mankind. God spoke to Abram and shared his astounding promise in Genesis 12, 3. God said, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Think about that joy. When you're hearing this, in you, in you, all of the families of the earth will be blessed. Now this is a guy, he's not even had a child yet. But God says, I'm going to use you in that fashion to bless all the families of the world. So we see the joy started that far back in God's word. 700 years before the birth of Christ, God's again foretelling the, the, the birth that's coming. In the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, we read, Bethlehem Ephrathah, you are small among the clans of Judah. One will come from you to be ruler over Israel for me. His origin is from antiquity, from eternity. Well, we know that, that Christ was there in the original times. Before we started marking time, he was there. So we, we know that God from that time was planning for Christ to be born at that, that very dark night in Bethlehem. Joy from the past. Indescribable joy is available to us from the past. And our present situation can bring us equal jubilation if we look for it in its present form. Part of the problem is that we've got the wrong idea about joy. We tend to connect joy with happiness and think that our joy depends upon circumstances. We've all been in difficult circumstances, difficult times. Does that mean we can't have joy? Absolutely not. Let's look at where we can find joy from the present. Certainly we see the joy from the present in the reality of Jesus' coming. But for most people, we're thinking about Christmas time. We're in the midst of Christmas time, just a few days from celebrating Christ's birth. What does joy mean to most people this time of year? Well, listen to this parody. And there were in the same country children keeping watch over their stockings by the fireplace. And lo, was said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that is for all people who can afford them. For there will be given great feasts of turkey, dressing, and cake. And many presents, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the presents wrapped in bright paper, lying beneath a tree adorned with tinsel, colored balls, and lights. And suddenly there will be with you a multitude of relatives and friends praising you and saying, Thank you so much, it was just what I wanted. <laughs> and it shall come to pass, as the friends and relatives have gone their way to their own homes, the parents shall say to one another, What a mess to clean up. I'm tired. Let's go to bed and pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> Thank goodness Christmas only comes once a year. And they go with haste to the cold bed and find their desired rest. 
Do you think that probably comes closer to capturing the, the joy that many people look for in Christmas in today's world? And how sad that is. Because it's brief. And sometimes it's troublesome. It's difficult maybe to get through the holidays because of all the hustle and bustle and the shopping and the cooking and finally it's over. The joy comes when Christmas ends. So we're missing. We're missing what God intends for us to have through this time. God wants us to have joy from the present as well as from the past. If we aren't looking for joy in our present circumstances, we can totally miss the joy that God offers us. Consider some of these principal characters from this passage in Luke. The shepherds, their circumstances, and their joy. Shepherding at the time of Jesus' birth had devolved from what it had once been. At one point in time, it had been a proud family business. And many people were very wealthy because of this. But by the time Jesus' birth had occurred... That wasn't the case. Shepherds were simply hired hands. They were on the, the very bottom of the social ladder. They're on the, the bottom of the economic stratosphere. They are looked down upon by everyone. Now they may have been Israeli by birth, but because of their work, they can't always go to religious worship and services, so they're not even considered to be clean Jews. So everyone's looking down upon them. Couldn't give testimony in a court of law. Why would God choose to go to them to announce the birth of his son? But Luke gives us the answer so beautifully. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. See, God didn't choose to come to the spiritual leaders of Israel to announce the birth of his son. He didn't find the wealthiest and most influential businessmen in the country and let them know that the blessing that had just been bestowed upon Israel. Didn't, didn't go to the political leaders and say, guess what's about to happen? God went to the lowest of the low and said, here's what's going to happen. I'm letting you know before I let anyone else know what's going on. God told him, fear not. For I bring you tidings of great joy. It's the middle of the night. You're walking around. You're tracking your sheep. You're trying to keep count of them. Trying to make sure that, that no predators get them. That you don't lose any. You get in trouble with the guy that hired you for this. You fall around trying not to step in sheep stuff. And suddenly you're supposed to have great joy. Do you think they're having joy being out there in the midst of the night? It's dark. It's cold. I don't think that's a job that most of us would find a source of joy. But out of the darkness, joy appeared for them. And here's a cool part. Think about this. What did the angel say? For unto you is born. Unto you. Not to the nation. Not to the people of Israel. Unto you. He's talking directly to the shepherds. The lowest of the low. You see, and aren't we really the same as the shepherds? Sometimes we'd like to put ourselves on a pedestal where our job is better, our position's higher than someone else. And no, really we're all just right there on that bottom rung. And God's speaking to us. He said, for unto you an angel is born. For, you see, I, I've got a Savior for you. I'm bringing you this Savior. You. On the bottom there. Now you've got to believe. You have to accept the gift that I'm bringing you. Our joy can come at times... In ways that we could never even possibly dream. I'm going to tell you a story from my highway patrol days. I simply call this my Christmas Eve. The hour is late, should go to bed, near midnight I believe. But memories keep me wide awake this snowy Christmas Eve. Yes, memories of my kids moved on. Each has their separate life. And how the holidays have changed since angels took my wife. 
the toys, the food, the Christmas cheer. My wife would bear the load because I would work most holidays, state trooper on the road. Just sitting in my easy chair, so many years retired, I reminisce on times gone by and all that has transpired. Of all the many happenings that seemed to come to light, a multitude of them occurred right on this very night. A drunken woman in Iraq who died on Christmas Eve leaves memories of a tragic case most people can't believe. I had to drive to where she'd lived to tell her next of kin. Found the run-down mobile home she had been living in. The person answering the door, I still recall today, a little girl about four years old. She said, I'm Sue McKay. I asked her if her dad was home and felt the longest pause. She said, my daddy ran away. You must be Santa Claus. My mommy said you'd come tonight if I just stayed in bed and bring a pretty doll for me. It's what my mommy said. I broke the law that Christmas Eve, did not call child's care. They'd merely put her in a room and that I couldn't bear. I picked her up and took her home. My wife tucked her in bed and wrapped a pretty doll for her, just like her mommy said. Adopted by a loving home and soon they moved away. I won't forget that Christmas Eve and little Sue McKay. Another bitter Christmas Eve, a blizzard to behold, had left a family in the ditch just trapped there in the cold. By grace of God, I spotted them all cold and gaunt with fright, drove them to a motel room to safely spend the night. One Christmas Eve, a homeless man, shivering and wet, was trying hard to get a ride. I'm sure he'd never get. I picked him up and drove him to a diner on the hill to warm his bones and left him with a five-dollar bill. Strange how when you're all alone with memories you recall, you think of everything you've done. Was it worth it all? I think about my God, my job, my children, and my wife. Would I do it all the same? Could I relive my life? Then comes a knock upon my door. This late, who could it be? A neighbor? Or has Santa Claus come to visit me? The figure standing in the cold gives me a sudden fright. A trooper with that solemn look. Dear God, who's died tonight? I'm flashing back through bygone years and how I'd often stood on someone's porch to bring them news and it was never good. Is this how life gets back at me? For misery I've induced, where pain I've caused some other folks has now come home to roost? But looking in the trooper's eyes, my mind is in a whirl. I see a pleasant countenance. The trooper is a girl. She smiled and reached to shake my hand, and silence wasn't broken until a tear rolled down her cheek, and then she softly spoke. I'm sure you don't remember me, but thought I'd stop and say, God bless you on this Christmas Eve. I'm Trooper Sue McKay. Our joy can come from the present. I'd like to ask a few folks to come forward right now. Johnny and Gail, Mark and Pam. Let's see, Susan, Myra. Miss Emily, you come too. Miss Emily. Th these are folks who the last two Saturdays have gone to Lighthouse Christian Camp and worked with the the boys party that was yesterday about 275 boys it was a quiet place to be <laughs> maybe i should say it was quite a place to be would that be more like it but it uh and the girls party last saturday but johnny if you can get the microphone there and just share that i, I would like for these folks to to share some of their thoughts or observations about having the chance to to work and perhaps share some joy during this christmas time um, I was trying to think what I told Larry this morning. Can you remember what I was telling you about what happened there? I remember one little boy told me, I asked, we were working in shoes and, and, and uh, hats and gloves and scarves. And I said, you, do you need any shoes? you need any hats? He said, I need lots of hats and gloves. I said, well, how many do you need? He said, I've got 12 kids at my house. I said, golly. So, and so he took for 12 kids at his house. Um, I didn't really have any that were too that would make me very emotional, that, that seemed pretty down and out. 
for the most part, they were pretty upbeat, very polite children, and they mostly wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, how about you, Gail? <laughs> you know, I got up yesterday morning, uh, could have stayed in bed, really wanted to stay in bed. And uh, I told Johnny, I said, you know, you got us into this. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Lord. <laughs> I said that. It was really, really a blessing. Some of these kids, you could tell, they needed shoes really bad. They needed a lot of things, but they needed love. They needed a hug. And this one little boy, when we got there, the, they had all these uh, amounts of money on each thing. The shoes were $5. But if that child didn't have but $2 or $3, it went in their bag. And some of them got two pair of shoes. But this one little boy was telling me he bought a chair, like a papa son chair, for his little sister to sleep in because she didn't have a bed. She laid by her, by her parents at night on the floor. And he wanted to get everybody in his household something. Went to get his mother a sweater. And I says, well, what size do you is your mother? Well, she's big. I said, do you see anybody here about her size? No, she's big. Probably an extra large. I said, well, let's find one. I found one. I held it up, and I said, will this fit your mom? No. She's really big <laughs> up top. And I said, okay, we'll find one. <laughs> so we found one, a real big one. But that little boy was so appreciative and thanked me and thanked me for taking the time to fool with him. So I'm so glad I went. Well, yesterday was my second time to go. We went last year, and I love working with little boys. And they was real sweet, polite, and courteous. They all said thank you. They said Merry Christmas. And they all had a smile on their face being there with us. Some of them you could tell was very un undernourished by the way they looked and some of the, the shoes they had on their little feet and stuff like that. But they was there shopping for someone they loved, you know. One little boy tells me, he said, I got my mama this, my brother this, my sister this. I didn't get anything. He said, well, Christmas is about giving, and that's what I want to do for my family. So it was really a blessing. And so next year, I hope you all will be able to come, too, because you will enjoy it. Some of the things that I was impressed with were um, the older kids. Um, watch it, Miss Susan. The older kids, the girls, we, we worked with the girls, kind of adopted the younger ones, and you could tell because um, you'd have a bigger teenage girl right behind a smaller girl, and several times they would have their money between these fingers and their, the, the child's money in front of them, in between the, and they would help the younger ones get their shopping done. That was fun to watch. Um, I remembered one little girl. I mean, she had a list, written out list, of who she was going to buy for, and had a lot of things were marked off. I said, I said, I bet that was different from the boys, because I can't imagine the boys coming with a list. <laughs> they were just grab, grab, grab. But um, yeah, they had. A, um, it was fun to watch them pick out things. And Emily and I worked at the table together. Uh, do you want to say anything about what you saw? <laughs> I gave her the option. <laughs> Uh, we worked with the little, little girls. Um, I was in, in the clothing, and all these little girls coming up and wanting to pick out clothes uh, for for themselves or their parents or whatever. Little girl came up to me and said, "I want uh, uh, something nice for my mama. Uh, I want to get her a blouse." I said, "Okay." Um, you know anything about her size? She said, "She's 110 pounds, about your size." <laughs> 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 I was a little confused, but uh, um, now, yeah, I, I, about this, I, I was a little bit reticent to even to do this because, uh, I, I, you know, from from our perspective, we've been so many years in a number of other countries from 
Central America, Mexico, and and uh, Central Asia, where they don't they don't do that. It's you know, and it's I kind of think, well, this is something that just makes U.S. people feel good, you know, because you know you're in you know Mexico, they don't get a present at Christmas and don't expect one, you know, and they you know so so I was thinking you know this is kind of a US culture kind of thing uh, but I really was impressed with all the people that came and from Wisconsin and everywhere and I got to work with a young man and a young lady uh, boyfriend girlfriend in their early 20s and um, I was talking to the young man and he said uh, uh, said that's gonna be my wife he said she doesn't know it yet he said she said she'll find out later uh, at Christmas, so mm -hmm. so it was kind of nice just to adopt that little couple and work with them, and it, it was a lot of fun. So. Well, as you all know, I don't I don't work with children, <laughs> so I was in the gift wrapping room. <laughs> but it, it they would because each child gets one gift gift wrapped, and they get to choose who it, which one it is, and. Um, we had a couple of little instances where one was, you know, little girl last week, you know, won this cookbook and this little basket that she had found with some kitchen stuff in it. Wanted that for her mother. Wanted them all together. Uh, another one this week had a little boy. He stood out the, outside the door watching his gift being wrapped. He wanted to be sure his gift that he chose to be wrapped got wrapped and got into his bag, even though now, you know, there this is going on all the time, but he was not going to let it out of his sight. He wanted to be sure. And uh, some of those um, boys yesterday were really, <coughs> really very protective of their things, which we didn't see that with the girls. And so they were, they were just really sweet. And um, some wonderful people who helped in the gift wrapping room. I worked in the uh, the line or whatever you call after the all the children had had done their shopping in their black bags and their what we call our garbage bags that were heavy so you know they did some some big shopping and my job was to uh, as Lynn did the wrapping our job was to for them to tell us whom <laughs> their uh, whom they wanted to give the gift to now I know yesterday was boys I know I wasn't there with the girls. But I would say uh, of all of the boys that gave gifts to someone, 99% plus gave them to mama. Uh, and I mean without a, without a, it was just want to give this to mama. Uh, and if I, if I can tell this, I told this to Van yesterday, my blue pill isn't working too good right now. <laughs> but uh, I, I stood there <coughs> And I, I know I saw them yesterday on, on their best day. Excuse me. I saw them smiling, happy. Thought I could do this. <laughs> But I wondered, I wonder what yesterday was was like. <laughs> and I wonder what tomorrow will be like. <laughs> We're so lucky. <laughs> Man. Thank you all so much. We can find such great joy in our present circumstances, solving by looking outside ourselves. Look at the chance to serve, to give, to, to share Christ's love. And each family, each child that was there the last two weeks, they're all different. We, we know that there's so many different circumstances that they come from. 
But it's not just bring them in, give them gifts, send them on their way. These are children that an organization or an individual or a family has sponsored. So they came through the camp. So they've, they've spent time, they spent a week there, and they've had a lot of, of opportunity to be exposed to biblical truths, to hear the plan of salvation. And part of the process yesterday and last Saturday also involved that they heard the Christmas story. So it's not just simply a matter of bringing them in, here's a gift, we feel good about what we've done. It's presenting true joy. The joy that we know as Christians. Joy is available to us from the past. Joy is available to us from the present. But also, joy is available to us from the future. I know that we anticipate things. We like to look forward to things that are coming. And, and some things more so than others. But I would like, now that you guys have gotten seated, Carolyn, if you will come forward, Johnny and Gail, and Mark and Pam. <laughs> These folks do so much to, to serve the church through the year. Uh, a lot of things go on behind the scenes that, that most people aren't aware of. But we want to take this moment to show our appreciation to them by giving them uh, gift certificates for dinner at the Jimmy Kelly's Steakhouse. So for you and Leroy, for you and your hubby, and for you and your hubby. You're welcome. Thank you all. So we know they have some future joy coming in the form of a nice steak dinner. It has been said that joy is not fully experienced in this life. It is but an anticipation of heaven. And that's really what we have. Luke 2 verses 10 through 11 holds the promise of future joy for Jew and Gentile alike. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. All of us. Doesn't matter what background, what race, what ethnicity, it doesn't matter to all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So we have that to look forward to. The outcasts, the higher ups, the wealthy, the not so wealthy. In Matthew 20, verse 28, Jesus said, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, as these folks have done, and to give his life a ransom for many. These folks gave, and I'm so grateful for that. And when the ransom was paid, we can have unlimited joy in our lives. Revelation 21, verse 4, gives us a quick picture of what the future joy for the believer will be like. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. We are here to serve on earth with God to save the lost. And the joy that's important in winning the lost to Jesus Christ. Miss Lynn Jones, if you would come forward, I'd like to ask you to do something for us this morning. During the past two weeks of Advent, we have lit two candles, candles of hope and love. This morning I'd like for you to, write, to light our third candle, the candle of joy. This one. Thank you. And you're a joy in our life. Oh, you are too. Thank you. We all are too. But as we leave today and we think about joy from our past, joy from the present, joy from the future, I think there's a key thing we need to take away. Pastor Adrian Rogers said it so well. He said, as Christians, the joy of the Lord is our best advertisement. Think about it. The joy of the Lord is our best advertisement. Adrian said, if you're not a joyful Christian, you're not an effective soul winner. 
He said, if you're going around with a Bible under one arm and a tombstone under the other, why would anyone want to be like you? <laughs> So let's get rid of sour expressions. Let's get rid of the, the downer approaches we take to life and celebrate the joy that God brings us from the past, from the present, and from the future. And if you don't know that joy right now in your life, today's the day to accept it, to come forward right here and to get right with God. To simply say, let me have the joy that only comes from you. Bring it forward now. Come forward. It's easy. It's simple. Now's the time to become a member of this church. If you've never done that, and you're saying, God, I know you're calling me to serve here. Come forward now to join. Please stand.